Hey, and we already have our first visitor. Let me turn off our <laughs> royalty-free music. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Fat Guys No More podcast. I am Scott. Uh, online with me tonight, we have Joe, the other not fat guy anymore, and Heather, who's not a guy, and she's not fat either. Um, Heather LaBruna, who um, we'll get more into her in a few minutes. Normally, I do all the schedule and have all these notes and have everything fancy, but I was on vacation, so Joe worked very hard and probably can't see him because he can't see his phone. Am I right, Joe? I can't see a thing. Look, okay. we go back to the notes so, that I wrote there. Oh, you have your notes, though. Okay, well, then you drive. Sort of. I sort of drive. No, no, I don't have my, my notes here. There were t- I took things I'll make sure I want to bring up and discuss it towards the end. Oh, okay. So, okay, then I'll go back and search for Joe, and um, and we'll get back on schedule here. So I think I think um, first thing we usually do, Heather, just so you kind of – I don't know if you've listened to the podcast. Usually the first thing we do is catch up where we were at last week, and then um, we will get started with, with you this time as well. So we're you aren't uh, just randomly looking at us. Going, who are these guys? But um, you don't, you don't have the fancy console that I do, so I can see everything both of you do, but you guys can't see everything that I see, and and I can do other cool things. So one thing I would do want to say this is Scott is back from vacation and has his terrorist uh, ISIS flag back up behind yes, him again. We are in the ISIS cave. We have the the backdrop here. I, I do that, Heather, so they can't determine which cave I'm in. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I didn't make it up. Somebody else did. So, But ever since then, the podcast has been from the ISIS cave. But as far as a follow-up <laughs> last week, uh, I, would say, I think uh, we, didn't have, uh, we didn't have a guest last week. So I think we just kind of want to follow up and see where Scott and I ended up on uh, where the week went. And then um, we'll get delving right into this week's well, uh, podcast. As you probably recall from last week, I, um, I went to Florida to get a lot of bike riding. And there's that echo again. That That is really weird. I'm going to try something. So there was a whole bunch of, okay, I know how to stop the echo if it gets out of control. Um, But uh, it was uh, for uh, Heather's talking, and I I had muted her. That's the key. (laughs) (laughs) For my life. Maybe if you can turn your volume down, uh, obviously you can probably hear me because people not online can probably hear me. But with if your volume were down a little, we might do better. Um, okay, is that better? I, we'll find out. Uh, <laughs> basically, when I talk. Yeah, see, we're getting yeah, echo. Hmm. This is live broadcast. This is live broadcast. Oh, bad. Ooh, that was and I'm whatever, you, whatever you just did, Scott, fix it. Well, I can do it, but then it takes Heather offline, which is a bad thing because we invited her to join us. But anyway. Should I have cool headphones on or anything? Would that if, help? If you had any headphones that could plug into the laptop, it would probably help because then the microphone would work through the laptop and then the headphones would play in your ear holes. Okay. You know what? I'll be right back. Okay. She's gonna now I'm going to take her off screen while she scurries away. Okay. So I went to Florida to ride my bike and um, it was like 50 degrees and 30 mile an hour winds. I did get in one day of riding, which was very fun going south. Going is, north is, was it's not 50 degrees. Is that cold or is that perfect? Because that sounds like perfect for uh, running. No, it doesn't I, sound... Well, I, when you're running, you don't experience 20 mile an hour wind chill. So it gets a little bit chilly. It was kind of funny because I was wearing uh, knee warmers. So I had exposed calves and I was not wearing gloves on my hands. And um, and the uh, uh, the uh, people going the other direction that I saw riding looked like they were riding at the North Pole because they're Florida people. And they... <laughs> so uh, oh, Heather's back. We'll let her get – she hit... She does not have her headphones plugged in yet, so I'm, I'm keeping her off screen while she goes. Th- oh, she's talking now, and she's not on. Okay, I'll bring her back so we can get a blow by blow here. But today, um, I did, uh, I did go out and rode. Uh, well, yesterday I rode like 33 miles, and today I rode 51 miles. So we're back on track. Cool. Do we? And I hear no. I hear no echo. No echo. No. Nope. No echo at all. That we have solved it was, the problem. It was all me. It was all me. I'm always the problem. No, no. Um, Jim Patton is watching right now, and he will he will test he will testify that you're not always the problem. I've been the problem at least once. <laughs> I'm trying to take off your long name. There you go, your government name. 
Okay, so that's my update. 18.4, Joe, you, did you do it this week? I did. I did 18.4 Sunday, no, Saturday night. And uh, I have to admit, I'm a little sore. I did uh, better than, well, I did about as well as I thought I would do. Uh, handstand push-ups and deadlifts. So it's a good, it was a decent workout for me. It's one of my least favorite workouts though, but um, I think I finished third in our gym um, with the exception of a couple people still left to do it. So not, not too terrible, not too bad. Ooh, I heard a little echo there. That wasn't you that time, Heather. No. It actually, it's probably me at, uh, at this point. Uh, yeah. So it was, uh, that one was a big one for me. And then um, uh, just getting back on track and confirming everything that uh, for the upcoming Ragnar race we have going on, we can discover, we can discuss that later, but. Um, That's that big team event. It's the same weekend as Tour de Pink South. Yes. Yes. We'll, we'll do, get into that in, in just a minute and to kind of explain what that is, Heather, for you. So you can, Maybe one day decide if you want to run 15 miles over a 24-hour period. I can tell you right now the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have to think about that. So, um, Without further ado, Scott, I will let you introduce Heather since uh, you know her much better than I do, and I met her about eight minutes ago. Yeah, right. yeah. Because no, actually, it was a little more than that. We're up to about. You've known her for about twelve minutes, but she did leave for a minute to find headphones. So. That's right. Um, I met Heather at. Um, and I'm going to give you some fancy stuff right here. I met Heather at um, the Tour de Pink East Coast last year. Um, and here she is shown with her, her magic finger. Um, Heather um, gave every night after a ride, they give a speech. Somebody gives a speech. Um, uh, three people, actually. And Heather Heather showed up and, and she brought props, which was one of the first times. And apparently um, the prop that she's shown holding there, that large finger, was what she was going to use to violate Bruce Springsteen later that evening, even though there was a restraining order. So um, the, the, her, her speech was, I've heard, every speech I've ever heard has been memorable. Um, but none for the fact that I was in tears laughing. Um, she, 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 uh, I should probably shut up and let her talk. And, and I, I do want to <laughs> note that um, she has previously uh, uh, apologized for letting her run unscripted on, a, on, on the internet right now. So um, we do try to keep this family oriented, but we have announced in advance to uh, hide your children. And uh, this could go all the way to R or uh, with a restraining order or, or, or something. But anyway, <laughs> we, we've, we'll, give the, we've given the explicit lyrics or explicit content warning on this. So if it does go there, we're not upset. <laughs> there you go. So anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm going to kick this off. And, and, and Joe listed some questions here. Uh, Heather, it, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't think I am, you are a breast cancer survivor who does Tour to Pink. And where should we go from here? Oh, man, you didn't prep me for this. I thought you guys were going to take over here. You guys are the professionals. Well, okay, so huh? professionals? Yeah. We've done this four times. <laughs> you heard our intro music. It is quite literally royalty-free music. It's the, we don't pay for anything. We don't even download it in advance. We do a Google search before we start. So anyway, so, so I, okay, I'll, I'll get you started with some questions. How many Tour de Pinks have you done? Okay. Uh, this will be my third. So, um, this will be implying yeah. that you're going to do East this year, I believe. I'm sorry. You're going to do East again this year or are you coming to yes. South? Okay. No East. Yep. There's it, no way I'd be prepared for South. There's probably no way I'm prepared for East either. I never am, but uh, well, definitely not South. <laughs> speaking of prepared, if I'm not mistaken, you said in your speech that you actually signed up for Tour de Pink when you didn't have a bicycle at all. Um, I, I hadn't been on a bike for 30 years, um, before I signed up for my first one. And, and uh, so. did you get a survivor bike? Uh, the second year I did last year I did. Yeah. I came in too late in the game for the first year, but so I, I rode on a lovely red road bike, uh, that Christine Malloy got off of Craigslist for me for like 300 <laughs> bucks. And, uh, uh, it was very nice. He accompanied her, so to make sure she didn't get murdered, and um, we I got a bike. So yeah, and then so the following year, um, the brakes were a little bungo. Uh, yeah, so I got the survivor bike and promptly wore through the brake pads just in that one ride. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> Scott, it sounds like I'm ready to do Tour de Pink. If I haven't, because you know I haven't been on a bike either in 30 years. So, and as a matter it of was, fact, it, go ahead, Heather. I was going to say I had never been on a road bike. Um, when I rode a bike, I was eight years old. It was pink. It was a huppy. It had a banana seat with a frog on it, and you pushed back on the pedals to get. Um, so I really was flying by the seat of my pants. So wait a second. You mean that's not what we? That's not what you guys ride at the Tour de Pink? I need mine to have a built-in stereo on the front. And <laughs> I'm all for maybe we could do sidecars <laughs> so they can have some poor schlub doing all the work, and I'll just be in the side. That's my. Oh, I, I actually own a tandem. Um, we could probably work something out. You want to ride on? All the right. Back? I- I'll be on the back. <laughs> but you keep keeping in mind you have to stare at my butt for like fifteen hours. <laughs> so, so what 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 was your what was the key reason you decided to sign up and do your first tour to Pink? Um. Well, it was ending in Cape May, which is one of my favorite towns. We vacation there every year. Um. And prior to that, um, my plastic surgeon. Uh, was trying to talk me into doing it um, so and but it, you know it just never um, I was always having some like body part removed so 2016 marked the first time that I did not have a body part removed so I'm like this I should do it this year and it's ending in Cape May and I'm sure it's lovely and so yeah <laughs> and I need you to expand on that a little bit how many body parts have you had removed <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well you have to keep in mind that that jamie discussed getting her nipples added on so i mean now we're going oh, the other direction i've got great nipple stories too um yeah so no i was diagnosed in october of 2013 and i had it bilaterally so in both breasts i had surgery november 11th 2013 uh, so it was a double mastectomy, a deep flap reconstruction, which for the uh, not so medically inclined, that, that basically may remove your breasts, do basically the equivalent of a tummy tuck, take the fat, and instead of throwing it away, they shove it up and create new boobs, and they have to reconnect all these blood vessels and everything. Um, so I had that procedure, and then I had a phase two of that procedure, which kind of fixed, like tweaked and stuff and then good nipples um the origami technique you know eat your heart out martha stewart um it's basically they cut they cut into the skin and twist and it twists into the shape of a nipple and then um i also had a historic total hysterectomy and oophorectomy which is the removal of the ovaries so i went into menopause lucky me um and then um in 2015 was the final thing and that's when i had areolas tattooed on i went down to richmond virginia saw amy black who's an amazing tattoo artist and she finished the job so it was a very eventful couple of years <laughs> okay i want to make sure i heard that scott i don't know if you're scratchy on your side but scratchy on it my. is did uh, you just think... say you had your nipples tattooed on your areolas tattooed on I did, yeah. So they, my plastic surgeon created the nipples, which gave it projection, but they were still flesh colored. So in order to make it look realistic, I went to the tattoo artist, and they, you would not believe, some women just do 3D nipple tattooing, and I'm not even joking when I say, like, I would say, go look it up, um, but I don't know, you might hit some other searches that you may not intend um, if you try that. But uh, the... For some with 3D tattoo, they don't have nipples or it's just tattoo. Uh, there's a famous tattoo artist down in Maryland, Vinnie Myers. You literally could be standing in front of the person and you would not be able to tell that those were tattoos. They look that real. And it makes sense that the guys who know how to do the shading and, and how to make things look realistic, they do with tattoos, um, or should be the ones doing that, so... We just had an interesting comment that um, uh, from OBV, actually. <laughs> um, he, he commented that, uh, ironically, you sound like Brooke Entz. Is it is it Entz? Known Entz, yeah. for her Do My Nipples Offend You shirt shown uh, a couple weeks ago. So, <laughs> if, if I Google nipple tattoos, Sandra, I don't know if you're listening. I'm allowed to Google uh, nipple tattoos because <laughs> Heather told me I was allowed to. You look. <laughs> 
Look up Vinnie Myers, uh, Maryland nipple tattoos. They will blow your mind as much as nipple tattoos could. So, um, like, I, I might, I make a joke uh, the, about you know my wife letting me Google that. I, there's a very good chance that she just got <laughs> off the podcast so that she could go Google that. <laughs> It's it's amazing. There's stuff out there, and some women choose not to get the nipple tattoos. They get really creative, beautiful things to hide their scars, and you know whatever's meaningful to them. So, yeah. Never. That's my never that's looked. my nipple story. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it, we need to change the name of the podcast. It's like nipple story. Two guys and nipple stories. That's the name <laughs> of the podcast. Oh, I'm trying to tell you. Well, uh, Jamie's story was uh, she she got she got her husband. Um, Kevin, uh, the nipples for his birthday. So that that was his birthday present. Cause, cause, All uh, right. I guess, I guess where she had her. I gotta step up my thing. Yes, for her, uh, for her, when they put her nipples back on or created her man-made nipples, it was on his birthday. So. Yeah. You need to Which, step step up the birthday the uh, birthday presents if that's what other <laughs> women are giving out. I I guess so. Oh, my God. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, so, so we currently have four viewers. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Yes, Heather was breaking up there, but I think I heard just about everything, and it did get much better. Um, we've covered Joe's questions. Uh, how does she know Scott? That Well, it's pretty obvious from Tour de Pink. So um, as you enter into your third Tour de Pink, um, I know when I rode my first three-day, um, some magic happened and not just Jamie Nickerson threatening to kill me if I didn't ride more. Um, but there, there's something that happens on a tour to pink. Um, and obviously you've been bit by the same bug as me because you're coming back for a third try. Um, what, what, what did riding it do for you? Um, well, it was, you know, ironically, I thought that riding with a bunch of survivors and, and, for a breast cancer nonprofit would not really be so much of an escape for me for thinking about breast cancer, but it really was. Um, and I know there was a lot of talk last year about the bubble and um, just, you know, this kind of protective dome that we ride around in and for, for three days um, we're in the world and everyone just gets along and it's just, you know, that for me was, that was nice. And, uh, and it was, you know, I doing more advocacy things with young survival coalition. Um, one of their research advocates, um, state leader. So, um, there's, as any survivor will tell you, it's always in the back of your head, the thought of recurrence or, you know, something happening, you know, we're diagnosed when we're young and we have a hopefully long, lives ahead of us and a lot of life to go you know hopefully without recurrence so but you can't stop thinking about it sometimes and so why not you know do something good which is you know and I've I've started to you know volunteer with YSC um you know I'm kind of in my town the like queen of breast cancer if anyone's diagnosed doesn't matter the age you know um I, I get random emails from people and they're, so who are your doctors? Can you just talk to the person, you know? And so it's, it's kind of nice um, because I've been there and I, I recognize the fear in women's eyes when I see them when they're first diagnosed. Um, so yeah, just really that rolling uh, community. And I, I'm trying to talk other people into doing it. Um, it's hard. <laughs> they it hear is. 200 miles they hear 200 miles and and you know three thousand dollars and they 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 kind of freak out uh, a little bit but i'm working on it <laughs> well, yeah. as, as i say somebody's done you know um i don't know if you know my background i've done crossfit for now for a little over five years the thought of going for a 200 mile bike ride whether it's over three days or not terrifies me beyond measure um and just because it, uh, the money the money's not even as scary as the thought that i'm a 200 mile bike ride well it does it can do some horrific things to your cry. <laughs> like um, I bought a seat last year and I think it was probably the packaging was more geared towards men. Um, it was an Italian bike seat. It was an Italian bike seat. And I think there was some lost in translation uh, stuff going on, but it basically said now non-genital crushing. 
So, so um, I mean, I don't think I don't think that was like a problem so much for me, but apparently, genital crushing is a thing, and so I can. If anyone has that issue, I'm just gonna keep saying that. Um, you know, I can recommend a good bike seat because my genitals were not crushed. So. I- <laughs> I, you I can speak from experience. Gentle, it did not. The Italians know what they're doing when it comes to non-genital mm-hmm. crushing your bike seats. They really do. They really do. <laughs> so See, I, I, I do have a question real quick because, Scott, you showed the picture, but we didn't go into detail other than the fact that she tried to uh, molest Bruce Springsteen with a, a giant foam finger. What, oh. um, I need to know the story behind the finger because that's all. <laughs> I've seen like six pictures of the finger, but I've not, I, I have no idea what's up with the finger. All right, so well, I'll throw no. out I'll throw out the lead in the Tour de Pink uh, yeah. last year. We on Saturday night uh, or Saturday we rode into Asbury Park, which is the, um, the I, I believe I, I, I'm going to say it wrong, but um, Greetings from Asbury Park is actually a Bruce Springsteen album. And on the as we rode into town, we rode right past the Stone Pony, which I spent the entire day trying to remember if what the name of the pony was and all I could come up with is pink pony, which is a far different establishment here in Atlanta. So, um, so, so with that, we, we rode past the stone pony and a few hours later after dinner, Heather, I'll, I'll let her fill in the rest of her story on, on everything there. Well, the night before when we were in Princeton, um, I gave five speeches and, um, You know, I had been asked by Danielle from YSC to kind of give my rundown of why I was doing Tour de Pink again. I mean, it's probably a mystery to many people when they see me on a bike because I'm terrible. Um, But uh, so I I wanted to infuse a little bit of humor. That's kind of my thing. Cute kitty. Um, Anyway. (laughs) Um, So... I kind of gave my my top three uh, reasons why I was returning to Tour de Pain suspects you know like i wanted to you know ride for survivors you ride for myself and and for my aunt who passed away uh, from breast cancer and the first reason i threw out there i figured i would kind of start with some comedy and um was that i was hoping that because we were ending you know one of the stops we were having is uh in asbury park that i would get to touch her strings to his butt and um, I mean, I don't really think it was like that long. Unfortunately, he was doing, he was doing his Broadway show at the time, so he wasn't even in Asbury Park in New York City. Um, so he did stand me up. But um, so yeah, I kind of you know pretending that I haven't really thought about it in stalkerish length. I uh, said that I kind of envisioned that I'd be waiting outside the stone pony, and he would show up on his. Harley or his Ford Escort, you know, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, he would invite me in as a guest. And then, as many people have seen with the uh, Dancing in the Dark video, where he pulls a very dude looking Courtney Cox up on <laughs> stage. Um, and uh, he pulls her up on the stage and they dance. So I figured, well, maybe he could do that as with me as he's playing Rosalita. And, you know, I'd be dancing, and then all of a sudden my finger would accidentally brush up against his butt, and then I could just die. Like, I, that's <laughs> it. Like, I'm done, you know? That's what I wanted to in life. So, um, but yeah, so that was the, you know, and then I went into the more serious reasons why I was riding, and at the very end, the finger, and, um, you know, not that I, like, have it. Uh, here or anything um this is like the best <laughs> this is like the the best 1499 i've ever spent on amazon by the way um oh, but, you bought that uh, on amazon? yes <laughs> i did i was just, I did I was just saying, that's not that's not your finger that's uh that's random amazon finger no hey, I, yeah I made, no no, no. I, 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 made didn't... You, I made you full screen so can you hold that back up again so the four people oh, watching can actually see it and those watching later as well yeah see it's it's Bigger than her head. She's picking yes. her ass. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yes. so th- for those that aren't watching, that, that she, she has a foam face. I'm assuming it's foam, right? It looks like yeah. A, yeah, it's a foam finger that's literally probably uh, half of a normal size body. 
<laughs> not, not even like half. It, it was like, good no. effects. And and she did. She yeah. did. Uh, I'll make it. I'll make that picture um, full screen right now. She did go to the stone pony with her finger, and she was prepared to use it. No Bruce. He, he no chickened Bruce. out. We'll see what we can make happen with our four episodes of, of Fat Guy No More. Yeah, and you know whether it's I get to touch his butt or it's a restraining order, like the New Jersey State Police show up at my door. You know, whatever. At least you know. Hey, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, I don't I bet Christine outside is like just coming from the stone pony with my huge finger. But by the one, way, that was if it was it was zombie night in Asbury. Oh, yeah, it was so Asbury Park does a thing where they have a zombie walk on their boardwalk and all these people dressed up as in crazy costumes as zombies. So me and my, my finger were not the weirdest thing that night. I just want to point that out. Like there were some. There was a lot of crazy crap going down. So, <laughs> hey Scott, I have a question. Are you when you when the people post comments because uh, Heather and I don't see them. Heather did. And, and I know until until you post them. How how late are you posting me? How late am I posting? Heather, is my, Heather yeah, is you, my lady crush. Do you get uh, you post them? <laughs> <laughs> do you post them as soon as you see them as well, or is it, yeah, as soon I do post them as soon as I see them. But I will tell you that the user interface leaves a little bit to be desired, so I kind of have to. Well, I, I guess I don't have to really stare at my face, but or, or all three of your faces, but it's down below. Um, I, I think it's, yeah, I was curious, and, and we know it's it's on Facebook Live, so there is a delay, like about a minute and a half or something's delay. Yeah. So I was, now, I was just curious. earlier, I, I'm going to ask you to explain this one because um, Joe probably <laughs> hasn't seen this photo yet. Earlier, I asked for a picture of your finger, and and out came the tampons. Um, I, I'm showing a picture oh, yeah. of, uh, of of Heather, apparently one. an arts and crafts product that, or project, and and uh, how, how did that come to be? All right, so that was taken the night before my total hysterectomy oophorectomy so I was never going to need tampons ever again um, so I made my husband go out and for the very last feminine products seen there um, I took some packing tape fashioned like a bandolier base and I stuck there and that was I posted that on my blog um yeah, uh, my poor husband standing in our backyard with the neighbors probably like, WTF, what's going on over there? Um, me with my tampon bandolier and my son's toy ray gun. I, I got to think your you neighbors know, have was, said WTF at least a few times. <laughs> you know, I was dropped on my head when I was a kid, and I can't help but think, <laughs> like, seriously, seriously, yeah. My mom tripped on her bell bottoms was a story, and... <laughs> grabbed onto the ring of the stairs and <laughs> I was in her arms. So, so, but uh, we have that little accident. To, well, to and, and you, you turned out for the WTF moments and not into a serial killer with you. Those were your options. And That's head, true. Head injuries or serial killer or you go up <laughs> to have uh, tampon bandoliers. Or, or I get arrested for trying to tunnel under Bruce Springsteen's like electric fencing outside of his, his house so uh, third option there <laughs> we still have time <laughs> <laughs> well well this like, year the, thank, I was just, re this I was year. just reading comment it says like Chewbacca and I'm wondering is she talking about your your no, your no she's seat, talking about the seat cover? I, I'm oh okay because uh, I was actually looking at Joe's seat cover and I was like is that Chewbacca <laughs> or, or it kind of looks like Apollo Creed's chest hair. <laughs> Why did you sniff it? I, I put didn't. you solo and you sniffed your seat cover. <laughs> I didn't, the funny thing is I didn't know this was here. So my kind of give you a background. I'm in my wife's office. This isn't even my office. I don't have an office. My office is a, a basement uh, gym. So uh, that's why I have a Harry Potter ball in here and, Apparently Apollo Creed's chest hair oh, okay. on me. And and you're gonna think about that. You're never gonna look at Rocky for the same. If he if he dies, he dies. <laughs> Yo, Adrian. <laughs> I think I will tell you this. I'm gonna get political for a second. I Amazing. think about this every time Russia gets brought up on the news. 
But I want to be like, if I can change and you can change, we can all change. That's what I'm going with. I, but you know I, what? I Putin is like seriously evil. So I do not I, think he would ever like get behind Rocky. That's really my litmus test. I'm like, this guy's evil. He would never like root for Rocky in the end. Everyone yeah, else would, is cheating for Rocky. He, he would not have clapped for Rocky in the end of that movie. No, so, yeah. no. So that that that's how we should judge all political figures is whether or not they would have supported Rocky. Well, it's a start. Yeah, like do they have that change of heart at the end? Oh. You know, first of all, that the boxing scene was kind of like total bullshit because like Drago or whatever the guy's name was was like ten foot six or something, and Rocky was like <laughs> four foot seven, like five nine. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, yeah, no. Um, but, um, but they were but, but they, yeah. they were both heavyweights. Montage. It's okay. Actually, yeah. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go this. If you, if you go back and watch that movie, the movie's like an hour and forty minutes long. Speaking of montages, it's it, the real. The whole movie's really only about a thirty minute ep- episode of something with oh, yeah. an hour and ten minutes of montages. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's quite impressive. Well, you saw? Did you ever see when the South Park creators did Team America? They did a whole spoof on montage. Like they were saying, gotta have a montage. And that's it's totally, it's, that's what Rocky is. It's like Drago is exercising and he's using all the steroids and the high tech equipment, but Rocky is dragging logs. And we think that rustic and low tech is better. So. And, and I think about this every time. And I, now, if you, I don't, when you guys ride, let me ask you this, Scott. I don't know if you do. When you ride, do you wear headphones? Because I know when you ride it, you probably don't need to wear headphones, but you need to be safer. I I refuse oh, to answer. On, I refuse to answer on the grounds that I know for a fact my mother's listening. Oh. <laughs> no, so I, I think about this because on my running playlist, and I, I run a lot, I have a, a number of Rocky songs, and I think about you know, I've, I've climbed you know Kennesaw Mountain, and I, that song will come on, and you're the best. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. That's Karate Kid. <laughs> oh. you're, the best, you're the best around. That's Karate Kid. Also. Oh, by the way, on the same playlist. But <laughs> I'll have those come on. And all of a sudden, you get a burst of energy. I don't care what anybody says. If you're working no. out, you, you can make Rocky a couple. Four. You can you can definitely PR that if you yeah, PR whatever you're doing if if Rocky comes on. Yeah. So I, I'm going to tell you this. A couple of years ago, yeah. during the, my first open, um, I, I made my own playlist for my very first work open workout, and in the middle of it, I put um, I Rick rolled myself. I didn't I didn't know I put it on random, but I had. Uh, Whatever it is, Rick Astley, never gonna give you up. I had it on on the playlist of like forty songs in the middle of a seventeen minute workout. That song came on, and everybody kind of laughed. I didn't mind. It's a good beat. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna work out. It's a good beat. Were you ever? Did you ever listen to the radio and it's like warm out and the windows are down and the is whatever it wants to, and a really terrible song comes on and you don't realize it and you roll up to like a traffic light and there's all these people around who have their windows down too, and this crappy song is playing and you're like desperately trying to find the tuning button so you can quickly turn it so people don't think that you're like rocking out to Nickelback. Um, or maybe that's just me. Hey, don't hate on Nickelback. <laughs> do, you, do, you know, do, you, do you know why why they're called Nickelback? Go it's ahead, okay. John. Okay, because they all used to, after they went to band practice, they would all go to a bar, or not a bar, coffee shop, and they would order the same drink. All of them would order the same drink, and it was a dollar ninety-five. so they would give them $2, and they would get a nickel back, and that's a true story. Well, that's not oh. as funny. I was ready to give it a didn't. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just a fact. Uh, even, even their band, like, background is lame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it she's not a nickel uh. back, babe. There's not a lot of them out there. <laughs> I actually got a at the at the Starbucks in Colorado Springs. They had a um, they always put a trivia question on there, and if you got the trivia question right, you got a free cup of coffee. And that was the question, and I got a free cup of coffee for knowing that. So See, I made nickel, knowing Nickelback hit trivia. It, it pays. That's I that's bet, all. I, I bet you Nickelback would play for a free cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's Nickelback hating tonight. Jeez. So, uh, so uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. I, I actually do have a question about back to, to 
back to your um, roots on, you obviously have had a, a double mastectomy. And you said uh, you've had a hysterectomy as well. Is that a, a more, more body parts removed? Um, is that all yeah. from, from cancer spreading or is that? Um, what's that? I'm sorry. I cut out a little bit there. Well, I says that, is that from yeah, the, was the cancer spreading or is that? No. Um, um, so, different procedures, different reasons. Um, no, I am BRCA2 positive. Um, so one of the BRCA mutations. So everyone's got BRCA genes and they normally stop cancer when you have these coding errors in your body. So these proteins that stop any coding errors, which would potentially snowball into cancer. Um, mine malfunction. It's too short. Uh, that that particular routine. So um, it puts me at risk for like a ton of different cancers. Um, but remove, so basically we have an increased risk of ovarian cancer. Um, and also they like to get rid of the ovaries um, in some women because especially if your cancer was estrogen fed. So my cancer basically grew off of estrogen. Um, they like to get rid of the ovaries. So that food source is gone. Um, That's interesting. I'm not really sure what's left of me to take. So hopefully they don't put <laughs> <laughs> anything else, but um, yeah. So that's that done. And uh, my husband and I laugh about it now because the year before he, we had decided we were done with kids and um, he had had a vas- so um, we now call that the unnecessary vasectomy and we laugh about it. And uh, well, I laugh about it anyway. Well, I, I mean, really in a marriage, if you're getting all these parts removed, you might as well get something, you know. Yeah. Just, yep. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, and a funny story there, too, was he had his vasectomy like on Father's Day, ironically. <laughs> and so I tell you to wear supportive briefs you know, to minimize bruising and swelling, but he never could follow directions. So he didn't do that. And my son was in Taekwondo at the time. And since it was Father's Day, we go there, we bring my son and they're like, it's bring your dad to Taekwondo Day. And then, so they wanted the dads <laughs> to participate. And I'm like, you just had a vasectomy. You can barely move. And my husband's like, but I don't want to tell anybody. And, you know, so he went out there and was like kicking and stuff. I don't think he walked for like, three days so um. wow <laughs> it's like men with not asking directions they just can't admit that they shouldn't be doing hey i'll, I'll have you know i don't i don't have a vasectomy when it comes around i don't care what the doctor says if he's operating down there i'm doing whatever he tells me i don't yeah. care what it is I, i'm gonna yeah. take his word for it they yeah not- i mean De- definitely words to live by joe joe you you <laughs> get, get your uh, apollo creed back on the screen um oh yeah there we go i, I forgot I, I actually had a question but i got lost in the ball sack or something sorry it happens <laughs> started, thinking, started thinking about my nuts it happens so the, does, uh, does your husband ahead. ride at all no he does not um he could he's like one of those tall wiry types that i know would probably at uh, cycling, but he has not. He's usually the one watching our kids while mommy goes off and does this crazy crap. So, um, yeah. So, and I usually hit on his friends for donations. So I'm like, dude, you can't do it because we can't. We can't draw from the same well. So, yeah. That sure. when when you get two people two people in the same family, it does get challenging. And, and you commented it's hard to convince people to do a tour de pink. Uh, in my circles, the Joe, what are you doing? I was about to try not to make noise. <laughs> you, so I just like the, your hand was going in off the screen. <laughs> in okay. the very first episode, in the very first episode, all you heard in this we didn't know is me fiddling with stuff at the desk. So now I have a uh, a pen cushion because it doesn't make noise, and I have a whatever this is a, a unwound up paper clip that I can do this because it doesn't make noise. I'm a fiddler. It's what I do. I fiddle things. Oh, and I have, a pla- I have a plastic bow. That, that's my daughter's, but um, I have a plastic bow because it also doesn't make noise when I drop it. And... <laughs> so <laughs> w- what I was saying before Joe distracted me, which is okay, um, is that, that in my circles, ever, at, riding 200 miles in a, in a weekend isn't that far of a stretch for most of my my 
contemporaries using a big word but the when you say yeah you got to raise three thousand dollars they're like um can i just donate five bucks and <laughs> so so it, it is a challenge but i i would absolutely positively encourage anybody who um who has been affected by breast cancer in any way to consider it because it's a great way to get around people and um through these podcasts, believe it or not, I, I've learned a great deal. Uh, even just listening to Heather tonight, I learned a great deal. And um, I, Joe and I are just guys. And when you start talking about body part removal, it 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 <laughs> we're we're kind of just like, well, there we go. We talk about nipples again, you know. It's a, <laughs> just kind of roll with it. Um, I I don't know where. Yeah. I <laughs> you, you said nipples you said apparently if you guys want to confuse nip scott just mention nipples and he goes he gets confused and can't think for a minute <laughs> he's gonna wander around to traffic somebody stop him <laughs> it's like revving up her microwave he forgets who he is and yeah pisses in the pants and forgets who he is for a half hour or so well it, and that's the, that's that's the weird thing because it's as smart as you know this is, most of my recreational activities involve playing in traffic, whether it be running, um, whether it be cycling, or whether it be motorcycling. Uh, I, I, it's like, <laughs> go play in traffic. Okay, that's um, what I'm supposed to be doing, I think. But at least I do wear a helmet, <laughs> even if I might accidentally wear headphones on occasion. So I do have a, a, a quick <laughs> comment for you, Heather. I want to let you know, because in the professional yeah. podcasting world that I am, that I do as a professional podcaster, I try to do a little research on you. I was like, I got to find this Heather LaBruna girl and find out who she is. Uh, <laughs> oh, you haven't, no. you, you haven't updated your YouTube page in like five years. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's got a YouTube. I can follow. I, I, well, she's got kids. There's, that's what I know. I from do. YouTube page. She has kids. I just, well, you know what? I, 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 always, I, always, I always, I always started a YouTube page because. We have, and they want to see like the videos of the kids and you know, that's the best way that I can get those to them. But um, you know, I was mainly interacting with like my blog and my blog's Facebook page. And that's kind of where I update. Well, and you can, you can learn about vaginas and lasering. If you go to that, my blog. That's what I was going to say. Um, when I got back from tour to pink East, I decided to be a creepy stalker and find out more about Heather. And, and the, the most recent post on her, on her blog, if I'm not mistaken, is when my vagina met a laser or something of that nature. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa laser. Yep. Yep. Um, as any woman can tell you who's been forced into surgical or something, um, the lady parts can dry up. Um, so they actually have an FDA approved laser now that it basically, and I don't know how familiar you guys are with um, plastic surgery. You're just shaking. You're just like, no, we're, whatever we're it not, is, whatever, you're just, we're, whatever we're it is. You're familiar. Familiar. So plastic surgery is on women's faces and it basically um, kind of removes a few surface layers and you look kind of terrible for a little bit, but the skin that comes out from underneath, like a sunburn, you know, the skin that comes out from underneath is very, like the lines are gone. It's very youthful. Well, they, using the same, pre you know, premise, they use this Mona Lisa laser to um, basically resurface the vaginal walls. And it stimulates collagen produ production. And sounds, sounds terrible. I'm barely I lost painful. you. I don't need to think about it. <laughs> This sounds unbearably yeah. painful. This is, I'm cringing it's over here. It's really, it's really not. I used to go on my lunch break, this lady, this doctor, or random lady, it wasn't like a homeless lady doing this with a laser, but uh, over by um, Rockefeller Center, this doctor, yeah, she. Uh, that, that doesn't sound. It, and I, I mean, I wouldn't do it as like a hobby, but um, <laughs> like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm bored, you know. I have to get um, the inside of my vagina lasered. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? You know? Um, oh, yeah. So well, it, it, it's it. I, I wanted to post this at some point today. And since she used to um, go to get her vagina lasered at lunch. Um, I, Joe, I just, I'm going to throw it up there on the screen right now and I'm going to go solo. I, I stopped by the old BGF today and, and took a picture of my bicycle. Heather, the BGF is, um, it, the initials are um, big gay forest and it's where gay men go to be gay. And uh, we <laughs> used to run through there at lunch, you know, so while you were at the doctor, we were running 
through the big gay forest. And, but I was trying to figure out how to segue in, and that was a beautiful segue to the. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. I don't know anything about beautiful segues. I'm a guy, and we're talking about <laughs> vagina lasers. I don't really do segues either. I find it's for comedic act, you just wham, bam, get in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm gonna segue out of that real quick. Uh, how's that for a segue? Mm. We're, we're uh, down. Uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I, I do have. I think most of our listeners, fortunately, do follow us up on iTunes or uh, Google. But we do get a, we do get a handful of viewers while we're doing this live. Um, I heard you say you're doing tour to Pink East. Uh, when when is when is the East? Uh, September 28th through the 30th. Have you started don't you know getting donations yet, or is that, how's that work? Yeah, um, as soon as you sign up, you can start harassing your friends. And I am like a couple hundred dollars shy of two thousand, and that's strictly right. through my email campaigns and continuous harassment of my friends and family. Um, beg them because I kind of have OCD for like round numbers and stuff, and like basically with the fundraising and, and like $500 milestones. And I'll be like, Oh, I'm close. Somebody help me. And then they usually do. Cause they just want to shut me up. And then, um, so last week I raised 500. So I'm going to try again this week. See if I can. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do what I can to help you out. I'm going to the live post and I'm posting your link. And to be fair, because I have South before you have East, I'm going to post my link too. Which was, I would say, that's going to be my next question. And Scott's, Scott's going to transition over to Scott's donations to see how he was doing. Because his is in, what, three weeks now, Scott? Uh, is it three weeks? I, I haven't so, done the math. Something like that. Three or, three or four weeks. I, I am currently, um, how far behind? I, I will tell you momentarily. I am at $1,940, so I need $560 more. And a little bird told me there is very likely to be a, um, a live event this week in which I badger people into trying to give me money, or try to badger people into giving me money. So, so that, we, that, we, we, we do the same thing you do, Heather, my wife, and I usually whenever Scott's like, hey, I need something to get to a nice round number. My wife's like, don't go ahead and donate whatever. So well, we <laughs> wait for him to get closer and start badgering us before we donate. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will stop talking about lasers and vaginas if you donate to the link. that's <laughs> <laughs> and, and quite honestly, as much as I would love to take the, the donation from this, um, whichever one because the money all goes to the YSC and that's the important thing and through um, badgering and abuse of friends and Facebook messages I will I'm confident I will come up with $2,500 for the last tour to pink that's $2,500 and then I will have to do $3,000 for West Coast later this year oh yeah it's right you're not doing East right no, I, I, I will I will I will state this right now um, I, I when I was live I stated it differently um, if I can mysteriously or magically get to get West taken care of by a reasonable date, let's say by the Peachtree Road Race, which Joe and I will talk about later, um, if I can have West taken care of by July 4th, I will um, reconsider East and most likely do it. Um, but last year I did, I did all three, and that was $7,500. And to do all three this year, it would be $8,500. And that's a lot of money to ask your friends for, especially when the year before I did two and a half. So it, it starts to add up, and they're like, didn't I just give you money? Yeah. Didn't I just ride one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my, that was my question. So, um, and I asked you earlier if you ever considered running 15 miles in a 24 hour period. Um, I thought we'd use this chance to transition Scott over to the Peachtree Road Race. That's. Uh, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Peachtree because I'm judging from your accent and sort of where you're driving the east. You are not from the south. No. <laughs> and. and- and just it, there's no place in the south where you can run over to Rockefeller Center at lunch. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's just not I run. Happen. I run when I'm chased. That's about it. Or if the ice cream truck is relocating from a two okay, different block. Okay. But so I have to share an ice cream truck story today. On my bike ride today, I saw an ice cream truck that they had tried to make it look like it was covered with scoops of ice cream. 
So what they did is they took insulation foam and and formed it all over the top. And I'm doing it on my head. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> but 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 then they painted it pink, and it looked like a brain driving down the road. <laughs> <laughs> it was an ice cream truck with a brain on the front of it. And it was, I'm like, that doesn't make oh. me even want to think about ice cream. It was a brain freeze. Yeah. That's a marketing <laughs> fail. That's a marketing fail. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think they had a marketing department. I think they had uh, two Latinos awesome. that, based on the driver, two Latinos that went to Home Depot and got way too much foam. Because, oh, it also was hanging <laughs> off the bottom, too. <laughs> got your brain sleeping out. Yum. <laughs> that reminds me. I need to go get some ice cream. That's what I'm going to say to that. All right. I, I got some last night. All right. So, so back to Peachtree Road I, Race. Go ahead. Yeah. So this week, I, um, I wanted to, I don't know if I told you this, Scott. The uh, My OBB and his wife, OBB is my other brother. You don't know the first brother. But OBB <laughs> is um, my non-co-working brother. Uh, but he is he and his wife signed up for the Triple Peach this year. Uh, and oh, have, did they? Yes, and they have convinced uh, Sandra to allow me to run a half marathon on Thanksgiving Day. So I will be signing up for the Triple Peach as soon as hopefully I get selected to run the Peachtree Road Race. Peachtree well, Road Race is a 10K, a 10K run um, on July 4th in downtown the Atlanta. Biggest. Yeah, it's it's 40, 40 to 60,000 runners. No, it, it, it's capped at 65 and there's a lottery. So there's about 65,000 idiots yeah. running downhill until they get to the big hill, and then they're hating life. And It's, but, a, it's a nice six-mile run with 60,000 uh, crazy people. And and Scott's story from uh, – say, Scott, this is your, what, fourth, fifth year doing it? Oh, no. Um, I've lived here for 11 years, and I've only missed years. one. So okay, this will so be my – this will be my 11th. This will be my 11th, I think. And this will be this will be my third. So assuming, assuming I get the lottery drafted, you know what that means? So, We're going to have so. to do the back to the BGF 10 K. Yeah. I don't like that run. <laughs> that you got to admit mean. though, it, it, it's, it's, it's similar to the uh, peach tree. So we ran where, where we used to work. We had a beautiful 5k loop um, that would run us through the big gay forest. And uh, we used to we'd run it probably once a week, maybe sometimes twice when we didn't have a lot of work. Mm. Um, and then they moved us literally 3.1 miles away. So now we run back to where we started before and continue it. Now we have a 10K loop. So uh, it's a much, much tougher run. But we've now done it. I've done it twice. Scott, have you done it? You've done it once by yourself. Uh, you? I did it once by myself and once with you guys. And once when you pooped in the woods. I did. I poop in the woods on the Whoa, back of the beach. There's a story there. Well, I had to go, <laughs> so I I did a wall squat against the tree and in the gay forest. No, 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 no. I'm Actually, just saying you, you I dropped was through the gay forest. I was through the BGF at that point. I was up, I was up near Life University. It was not in the the gay part. Why didn't you just poop your pants? I have friends that do marathons, and they say people are shitting their pants like left and right. <laughs> That's why I don't do marathons because I never want to be compelled to shit my pants. I'm just saying it's not something I'm. It happens. Man. What do you do when you go back to work with a load in your pants? I mean, you can't go inside. <laughs> you you just go home. I wrote. I ride a motorcycle to work. You really don't want to get on a motorcycle after dropping a load in your drawers, and you certainly don't want to put your motorcycle pants on. It was much easier to just you know, just go for it. No, Scott and I Scott and I ran a half marathon together about five years ago and uh he literally stopped at a porta potty about six miles into the half marathon to to go, you know, to poop poop. I don't hey. know, I'm like I you do what you gotta do. I think I think uh, Stephen Bragg is not a fan of your defecation stories. <laughs> what did what did Stephen do? Did he comment? He says worst part oh. of this worst part of the podcast. Stop! <laughs> hey, at least, at least he made it. He made it 57 minutes into this thing. Yeah, really. I, I'm pretty uh, proud of talk it. about vaginas and lasers again. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop talking about shitting your pants. I have a lot of good shitting pants stories too, but that's for. Another, we'll have to another save that one for for another time. For part, yeah, yeah. Part two. I don't, like to, the... <laughs> I don't like to throw it all out there. Part two, when the pants got shat. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the uh, I did want to say, I say so. Um, hopefully, if they, I think they announced Scott, they announced it this week. They announced it um, next Friday. Who gets picked for the Peachtree Road Race? So is, at that point, did, is, did I miss the lottery? Uh, I think you still have a chance to go right now. Is I think it it's tonight? Did, um, I think it ends Monday or Tuesday. So okay. Make sure you get make sure you get it in. All right. Yeah. When, when I'm when I'm downloading and doing my, my technical teammate, work. My uh, teammate Trisha used to live in Kennesaw. No, she, she, yeah. she knows about the peach tree. Yes, she does. I, I run actually Kennesaw Mountain to train for the peach tree. And and the Ragnar. Hey Scott, uh, prizes and and uh, we're about to go live on HQ. I just got no, the alert. Yeah. yeah, but the, um, dude, speaking of that, my cousin and I made it to t- the twelfth question the other night. Really? And we got it wrong. Shame on you. We would have won like seventeen cents because there were five thousand people that made it that far. The um, so I want to go over we we transition from that was something we mentioned last week on things uh, things I like to do. I know we're getting how close are we, Scott? Because I know we're, 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 we're we have getting a rule. close to the top of the hour. So but but I think a, we we started a couple of minutes after. So we, we have we're, a rule, Heather, that we refuse to go over an hour. So I try to squeeze everything in at the last minute that I had notes on. Um, but things I like. So I had some uh, last week. We mentioned the HQ app. If you haven't listened to it or downloaded it, download the HQ app. It's a trivia thing where you can win money. If you're good at HQ trivia. HQ trivia available on play, uh, iTunes and uh, Google Play Store. But I, uh, one thing I wanted to shout out before I say do things I like. I don't know if you saw this, Scott. Our friend uh, Tracy Serene. Uh, she is no longer Tracy Serene. No, she's our, Tracy Serene Hernandez. Hernandez. I wanted to say congratulations to her if she still listens. So. She, uh, Tracy is a, is a good friend of mine whose uh, husband passed away from brain cancer three or four years ago. He's my uh, – I think you had a fuck cancer shirt on in one of the uh, things her, I saw. Her Facebook profile right now has that's has that. it. He's he's our uh, our resident fuck cancer story. Um, he was one of my mm-hmm. best friends and and passed away about three years ago from brain cancer. So um, her husband just got remarried though this weekend, and we could not be happier for her. Actually, her his, his wife. You said his her wife. Husband. Not, not her, her husband. husband. <laughs> if he got <laughs> married. Woo. <laughs> Her, he, my best, my one of my best friends, widow, got remarried this weekend. Yes. Okay. That's, so we're actually it was midweek. To... It was midweek, but yeah, dude, we almost we almost did a travesty to our uh, to our blog. I, I was waiting on you to figure out how to do it. Well, it's simple. We have to just say that this weekend Matt Reichard went to Home Depot for two items, two, but came home with a whole shopping cart full of projects. Matt Reichard is the homemaker that I've always desired to be or something. We, we, we mentioned Matt Reichert every time because he's, he's secretly funding our, our, our blogging and podcasting because we stole his credit card and we're going to give it out on a HQ trivia. That's right. That's reasonable. <laughs> and then my, my new thing that I'm really enjoying this week is a, <laughs> uh, a YouTube video blog, vlog, blog, blog, that uh, by a comedian named Drew Lynch. I've been uh, uh, listening to him. He does like eight minute vlogs with his dog. He does dog vlog, and um, he has a really bad stutter, but it's he's freaking hilarious. That's my new thing this week. I wrote it down earlier. I was like, I need to talk about Drew Lynch. Dude's hilarious, and I'm gonna figure out how to get him on here with his stutter. <laughs> what does your shirt say, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, CFBR Mud Gnomes. CFBR is our CrossFit, okay. our CrossFit room, our CrossFit boiler room. That's the gym I uh, okay. coach at and uh, OBB owns. And then the Mud Gnomes is our um, team name for when we do uh, obstacle course runs and things like that. Okay. Uh, and and look, there's a there's a I don't know if you can see that, Scott. Can you see it? I caught that. Yeah, it's yeah. a gnome. It is. Uh, My size gnome very into gnomes. So, well, if you if you ever get a chance to, Scott has met met OBB I think once or twice. I he's twice, a, actually. He's about five foot six and has a beard like this, and he kind of looks like a gnome. So All right. He's he's taken with it and ran with it. Who's taller, Chad or Steven? Does he do chill parties? If, if you need him to, he would. <laughs> we 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 found out this weekend, uh, Stephen is about an inch or inch and a half taller than Chad. No, we won't comment on that because then you'll get kicked in the office again. Well, yeah, we won't we won't discuss that at all. But Chad doesn't listen this long. Because him and Willie are anti-podcast. Are they really? That's not. I don't know. I just made that up to start controversy in the office, so we have something to argue about at the coffee machine. Don't 
Yeah. Well, Heather, it was it, it was fun getting to know you a little better and and hearing your story of of removal and and other oddity. Um, <laughs> and and lasered vaginas, golly. Yeah. <laughs> that one's really sticking to him. I'm kind of focused on the nipple aspect. It's of it. really it's Hold really on. not as bad as it sounds. I also did take my notes. Look at that. These are all the things we discussed. I scarred those out as we went through them. But yep, I have to look up tattooed nipples by what did you say, Vinnie Myers? Is that right? Or somebody? Vinnie might... Myers. Yep, I wrote his name down. I'm mm-hmm. looking up. Joe, Joe. Oh yeah. Do that. Do that at home or on your phone, not at work. Don't do you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You do your pornography work at at, at, <laughs> at home. The, the, okay, so what you need to know about that story, Heather? Um, we we were in an all hands meeting with our at the time SVP at work. Uh, Joe actually used to work for me before I fired him. Um, that's another story. But, um, I, I actually found him another job and moved him because Tissa Rumpf wanted to uh, fire him. But uh, the the there was a there was a scare that people were going to get fired for uh, for screwing up at work. And he's like, "Look, I want to assure you." mistakes happen and i understand he goes you're not going to get fired for for making a mistake as long as you do your pornography work at home everything will be fine your pornography work <laughs> pornography work and quite literally as i'm sitting there in the, in this presentation the the phone my phone starts going because of course i had a vibrate and and everybody's like did he just say do your pornography work at home and i'm like yep, he, he did i i saw it live i miss him as an svp i like our, i like our other SVP, but i miss him he was entertaining yeah <laughs> so words yeah, to any, go joe I was saying, I just wanted to say thank you seriously for jumping on and, and giving your story and uh, no problem. And and I believe I'm the only one that dropped the f bomb today, so I think we're good, Scott. I, I, you did. I did our, you did. But, yeah. but when we were talking about cancer and your f cancer. Oh yeah. He, he, oh, well, he, that he, doesn't he, count. Yeah, doesn't because count. if it's involving cancer, you get a pass. Hence, I mean, you're holding okay. your your cute little child. I don't remember which one, um, but you're holding your child while wearing the f cancer shirt. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know that that photo appeared in a magazine, and they blurred out the fuck cancer. I'm like, oh, lame. Yeah, I mean, if you can't say it then, when can you say it? Really, that's true. Right? So true. Uh, well, it, 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 I should probably not tell this, but um, as you may know, my father has on his one of um, uh, Dustin's stickers the the F can the 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 F ribbon C K cancer on his um. On his uh, windshield, on his motorcycle. Say it, Scott, say and, it. Well, That's I was fat, trying to. Fat cancer. I don't mind saying fuck. There, I did it. But but it it has the the, the check, ribbon. Duck, in. duck cancer. <laughs> but the, the, cancer. the story. The point of the story is actually that it has the ribbon in there instead of just saying mm-hmm. fuck cancer. Because somebody somebody was giving him a hard time about that being on the front of his motorcycle at an event. And he goes, Yeah, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that ribbon symbol. So I think we're. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Scott, that one. You'll, yeah. you'll have to uh, you'll have to find outro music for us as well, Scott. Oh, again, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, this is another thing. So we started this last. While you're finding that, Scott, I'm explain, we started this last podcast where we thought, well, hey, we should have intro and outro music because other podcasts do that, and we should do that as well. But we're lazy and don't want to have uh, pay for it and, and or have yeah. the same music every week. So we uh, <laughs> we literally Google that, and one of us holds up the spare phone that we have, and that's our intro or outro music. Well, since I'm not using my phone, it's just my phone. Um, oh, oh, this one sounds good to, to exit on. And by the way, Heather, we, we wrap up after we go offline. So just hang out for a second. But this is called Happy, yeah. Happy, Fun, Joy by Gigi Riggs. Let's see how this works out. Ooh, I like this one. All right, everybody. This Have a screen's good night. free.